There's a young lady by the name of Rachel Malonson. She won the Miss Black University of Texas pageant. Now, it should have been okay in getting the scholarship, but no, people had an issue with that because she has a black father and a white mother, and it, it started all the colorism talk all over again. Let's go roll the clip. It's a moment she never expected to have. I remember texting my sister before, and I was like, honestly, I don't even think I'm going to place. Last Sunday, Rachel Malonson was crowned Miss Black University of Texas. I immediately was just like, oh my gosh. But the feelings of excitement started to fade after these photos were posted on Twitter. And someone literally personally asked me, are you black? Can you prove it to me? And I was like, yes, my dad's black and my mom's white. Members of the Iota Delta chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi, a predominantly black fraternity, say they have two qualifications for entering their annual scholarship pageant. You have to be a woman and you have to have some African American in your heritage. I don't fit the stereotypical look that you would think a black person would fit. And Melanson says the avalanche of tweets she got because of it got so bad she had to delete Twitter off her phone. This one guy, he said, kind of sad that the black community didn't have the brass to limit the pageant to only women women that looked black. We asked UT psychologist and professor of African studies Kevin Coakley what he thinks is driving these types of responses. People of African descent who are more phenotypically black, if you will, have not um, gotten positive messages about their looks. Um, and there's, I mean, they're just too many examples to count. And says he thinks some people on social media look at Melanson's win as reiterating this. Melanson says she wants people to know she won the title based off her hard work and not her color. I want people to be able to break away from those stereotypes. And tells us this experience has given her a bigger platform to share those thoughts. Now what the brother was saying toward the end, that is definitely some legitimate points. But the issue for me, and I still keep seeing it as a colorism thing, and we have to admit within our community, the colorism issue is more female based than anything because we have brothers that are biracial and you don't hear the brothers talking about all oh, this light skinned dude and one again, you know, we don't have that issue. And, I, and, and I'm trying to handle that with kids gloves and not just go off about certain things, but I just want to make you think a little bit. Now I get the history of everything. I know about the Brown paper bag test. Yes. That if you're lighter than a Brown paper bag, you accept it. That's literally in history. Look it up. We know about the plantation fields. That's how colorism really got started. The lighter skin slaves be in the house, the darker skin slaves like myself be working the field. That's who are the originator of colorism. But see, the thing is, we have carried colorism ourselves way after slave master don't have his hands on us like that. The brown paper with the bag test has been gone, even though we still kind of see it here and there, but it's gone. It's not like literally put up brown paper back to your skin and then that's how you get opportunities. We are perpetuating that within our own group. And the mentality that a lot of us have is our problem. And if we could break the chains of that mentality of colorism, then we could move on. Now, with this situation, I would understand you being upset if Rachel Dolezal won the Miss Black University of Texas pageant. I would get it because you would be right. But she do have a black parent. And I did a live stream about this a while back called the Black Police. You have people in our community always trying to police who is black. I have two black parents, but yet when I ran my DNA, I'm not a hundred percent African. I'm not, you can run your DNA with two black parents. You're not going to be a hundred percent African either. You're going to have some Caucasian in you somewhere due to the plantation field, or maybe your ancestor, whatever got with a Caucasian person. We don't know on their free will. So you're going to have it somewhere just because you don't look a certain thing don't mean it's not in your DNA. And we talk about how we hate racial oppression. We hate to be treated different for the color of our skin and so on and so on. So why would we do that to her? And you may say, well, because of all the stuff that's happened with colorism. Okay. But is it her fault? Did she cause it? Did she set up the rules? Did she set up all the system? You mad at the wrong person. She's not the one that you need to be mad at. 
And we have this thing about what we define as blackness. And for me, I don't like some of the things that we define as blackness because the moment you define what blackness is, that's a moment that people could come in and co-op that and deceive you just because if you see a woman with natural hair talking about rah rah all day long, doesn't mean that she's for the people or for the community. If anything, y'all should talk with her, find out what she go through. She can't be accepted by people in the black community because of something that she had nothing to do with her two parents getting together. You know, good will. She's not accepted in the white community as being white. She's not. So you have her like in the middle and you have two groups of people that don't want her or people like that. Right? So what are they supposed to do? And you notice the biracial person is always trying to do things to fit in because they're trying to figure out a place for them to be. Of course, if they look more racial ambiguous than others, because you have some people who are biracial, they may look more black and people wouldn't even know they had a white parent or whatever else parent. You know, you've seen, they're like, I didn't know your mama was this race. I thought you had black parents. You, you get what I'm saying? And we have people that watch this channel that are biracial and probably going through the same thing or been through that with some people within the black community. And we need to stop that. At the end of the day, we all black people. And if she wants to champion causes in the black community, if she wants to do the right thing, then why would you treat her that way? She has a black father. And you know how it is in this country. One drop of black blood, you're black. And that's what they've been operating like that ever since we got started. And I know some people in the comment section gonna try to say, oh, well, the black guys that was the judges, you know, they are this, they're that. Always some name calling. But can you bring some sort of concrete evidence to the name calling you're doing. And that's why we're minimizing that name calling in our comment sections, because we can't get certain interviews or people feel certain ways after interviewing with us because y'all in that comment section. So we definitely going to clean that stuff up because some things in this comment section don't make sense. You can have a disagreement, which is fine, but all the name calling and all of the stuff that they really have to stop, but you can't blame her for a system that she didn't set up. You can't blame her really for anything until she actually do something to warrant that type of response. Because what we do is we take it out on the wrong ones. And I don't think she should be the one to be handled that way by those in the community are mad at those who created a system that hurts you like that. But we're going to talk about colorism and get a little bit more uh, in depth about colorism on a statistic level and doing some more research as well. It won't stop. And I noticed it is a major issue with the women more so than the men. And I got to really dig deep and find out why. Check out our advised media network, Teespring store. You can pick up some merchandise that will support the show. And also join us on Patreon for a minimum of $2 a month or $5 per month. You'll get different perks at different levels on Patreon. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video, like the commentary, and subscribe for more news stories.